Indoor plants are fantastic for creating a cozier atmosphere in your home. They can purify the air, improve your health, enhance your focus, and serve as colorful decorations. To ensure the longevity of your house plants, it is important to provide them with a conducive environment, the right amount of water, and proper nutrients. So you need to do the following. Part 1. Ensuring a consistent water supply for your plants. Keep the soil moist but not wet. Overwatering or allowing the soil to dry out excessively can damage the plant's roots, hinder its growth, and even lead to its death. Plants with thick, dense leaves require more water compared to those with waxy or leathery leaves. There is no specific watering rate that suits all houseplants. You need to identify the type of plant you have and follow specific watering guidelines by conducting research. You can tell if you have overwatered the plant if mold starts to form on the soil's surface or if you find stagnant water at the bottom of the container. Water your plant if the soil becomes lighter in color or cracks appear. Succulent plants require dry periods between watering. Empty excess water from the container if you notice it accumulating, ensuring that the plant is not left sitting in water. Stagnant water can also kill plants. Insert your finger into the soil to determine its moisture level beneath the surface. If the soil feels moist, you don't need to water it yet. However, if it feels dry, it's time to water the plant. Again, this varies from plant to plant. These conditions generally apply to most plants, but not all. Signs of excessive moisture include pale leaves, stunted leaf growth, leaf loss, and soft, mushy patches of mold. Signs of dryness include slow leaf growth, leaf edges drying out and turning brown, and yellowing and curling of lower leaves. Use room temperature water. The ideal temperature for watering plants is around 20 degrees Celsius. You can use a thermometer to determine the water temperature or simply leave the water outside after pouring it to allow it to reach room temperature. Water that is too hot can damage the roots and shock the plant, while water that is too cold can cause the plant to become dormant and inhibit current or future growth. Use a handheld moisture meter to determine the moisture level in the soil. Moisture meters are more accurate in assessing plant moisture levels. They work by inserting a probe into the underlying soil to give you a reading of the soil's moisture content. You can purchase a moisture meter online or from home and garden supply stores or specific retailers. Choose a well-draining pot. The amount of drainage in the pot where you place your plant is crucial, as both overwatering and underwatering can harm or kill the plant. Ensure that there are drainage holes at the bottom of the pot. Materials such as plastic, metal, and glass absorb water less than ceramic or clay, so keep that in mind as well. Make sure there are holes at the bottom of the pot to allow water drainage. Accumulated water can kill the plant if you use a pot without drainage holes. Part 2. Taking care of your houseplant. Choose an area in your home that receives an adequate amount of sunlight. Plants require sunlight for photosynthesis. The quality, intensity, and duration of light all impact plant growth. Avoid placing the plant in direct sunlight. Instead, provide it with indirect light by placing it in a well-lit room. Fluorescent lights can be successful alternatives to natural sunlight for some plants. Flowering plants need 12 to 16 hours of light exposure daily, while foliage plants need 14 to 16 hours. Avoid moving your plant excessively. Plants adapt to their surroundings very slowly, so it is preferable not to move them frequently. This also includes placing them in areas with significant temperature variations. Suddenly moving a plant from a darker area to one with abundant sunlight can have a negative impact on the plant. If you need to move the plant, take it to the new area for an hour each day and gradually increase the time until it fully acclimates. Increase the room's humidity. While certain plants, such as cacti, may thrive in dry air, most plants, especially tropical ones, require humidity. You can purchase a room humidifier that sprays cool mist and ensure that it is placed close enough to raise the plant's humidity without wetting the flowers or leaves. A cost-effective option is to fill a tray with gravel and add water until it reaches just below the gravel surface. This will increase the room's humidity as the water evaporates. 
You can also fill a spray bottle with distilled water and mist the plants to provide additional humidity. Use Balanced Triple 10 Fertilizer for your pot. Most houseplants thrive on a Balanced Triple 10 Fertilizer. Houseplants require the nutrients present in the potting soil and fertilizers to survive. Eventually, the plant will die if you don't repot it or add fresh nutrients to the soil. The first number represents nitrogen, the second represents phosphorus, and the third represents potassium. If your plant is flowering, you can purchase a fertilizer rich in potassium. If your plant is foliage heavy, it will benefit from nitrogen-rich soil or fertilizer. Additionally, plants require trace elements that should be replenished by adding fertilizer or potting soil to sustain their life. Succulents or plants with similar characteristics require well-draining soil to effectively drain excess water. They also need pots with numerous holes at the bottom. This prevents excessive moisture retention in the soil, which can kill the plants. Regularly prune your plant. Certain plants require periodic root pruning, so it is important to read about the appropriate pruning rate for your specific plant. Unpruned plants can grow out of control, and their roots may grow outside the pot or container. Regular pruning is necessary to maintain their health and facilitate repotting. Trim dead or decaying branches or stems that may attract insects. Prune just above a leaf node at a 45 degree angle to encourage stronger plant growth. Avoid putting tea or coffee in your houseplant. Adding coffee or tea to the plant can attract flies that may feed on your plant, and the sugar can create an ideal breeding environment for these insects. Some claim that adding ground coffee is beneficial for plants, but doing this with plants that are less tolerant to acidity can kill them. Part 3. Understanding your plants. Identify the classification of your plant. There are numerous online encyclopedias that provide detailed care instructions for specific plant types, including appropriate humidity levels, sunlight exposure guidelines, and watering instructions. Many houseplants differ from one another, so knowing the ideal conditions for your plant is crucial. Most houseplants come with a label displaying their common and scientific names. If the label is not present, ask the florist from whom you purchased the plant. The scientific name consists of two parts, the genus and the species. For example, the scientific name for the peace lily is Spathophyllum wallacee. If you see an X sign or a third name or a name enclosed in quotation marks, it means the plant is a hybrid, cultivar, or a subspecies. In simpler terms, it belongs to a specific lineage. However, some plant types may confuse you with generic names like common plants or variegated palms or desert succulents. To distinguish the plant among several genera, if the species is not specified, you can consult a horticulture specialist and seek their advice. Refer to illustrated pictures in flower books, plant encyclopedias, or houseplant guides if you have been given a houseplant and are unsure of its type, and try to find a matching image. Obtain the species and cultivar names accurately to ensure it is the correct plant. Genus can encompass millions of species and cultivars. Growing some species or cultivars at home is easier than others or the original wild types, and they come in various sizes and growth rates. Some fig species grow to become large trees over time, while others become climbing vines. The same applies to anthuriums and philodendrons. Realize that not all plants sold as houseplants thrive in the long term. Many plants found in the market as houseplants do not truly belong to the indoor environment. Many people buy these species unknowingly, and they often die, resulting in frustration and a reluctance to purchase houseplants again. Many flowering plants are annuals, meaning they live for one year and then die. Snapdragons and petunias die after flowering and should be discarded. Bromeliads also die after flowering, but they produce small plants that can be separated from the mother plant and propagated or left alone. Other plants, such as mini roses, hydrangeas, and living Christmas trees, are hardy shrubs or trees that prefer outdoor planting and living as their counterparts in the external environment. The same applies to tulips, daffodils, and other spring flowers. Many other plants are tropical shrubs or perennial bulbs that enter an unattractive phase after a period of attractive flowering and require special care to return to their former glory.
Examples include poinsettias, sold around Christmas, caladiums, and various tropical, summer flowers like calatheas, gladioli, and calla lilies. There are other types that do not maintain their attractive form for more than a year or two, even with proper care, and they need to be replaced with new ones. Begonias, impatiens, araceae, and rex begonias are examples of this group. Most plants are sold in mixed species baskets or pots that need to be separated. They are arranged for aesthetic purposes, not for the compatibility of the species. Desert or tropical plants are exceptions to this. Determine whether your plant is green foliage or flowering. Green foliage houseplants differ from flowering plants and require different nutritional elements, as well as varying amounts of water and sunlight. Most houseplant varieties that attract customers belong to a large group called angiosperms or flowering plants, but not all of them produce attractive flowers or desirable buds. Additionally, many species never reach the fruiting stage if kept indoors. Flowering plants that are grown for their flowers and or fruits include different types of jasmine, peace lilies, calatheas, poinsettias, flamingo flowers, amaryllis, and most orchids. Seed plants that are grown for their green foliage include aglaonema, maranta, calathea, zz plants, dragon trees, climbing philodendrons, and the two popular fig varieties. Some species have both attractive flowers and leaves. The begonia genus is an excellent example of this, and the rest include cacti, succulents, and many cultivated varieties that produce diverse or multicolored leaves. Gymnosperms are seed plants that do not produce flowers but instead produce cones. Conifers such as pine and fir trees are examples of these plants. The common Christmas tree is called Araucaria heterophylla, and its close relative is the Araucaria araucana. The screw palm is not a palm at all but belongs to the cycad group with the Zamia furfurisia. These plants take years to produce cones and are therefore green plants. Ferns belong to a group that is not related to flowering or seed plants but is referred to as ferns, along with some other plants, and they produce spores rather than flowers or cones. These are also considered green foliage plants. Some flowers are marketed as something different from what they actually are. Companies or sellers attach flowers to cacti or any plant to make them appear as if they bloom. Lucky bamboo is not a grass or a type of bamboo. It is a type of dracaena or a similar plant. Some companies dye flowers or plant leaves or stain them to make buyers believe that those are the natural colors of the plant. Dyeing flowers is not a big issue, but coloring the plant obstructs the light it needs for photosynthesis. Choose a plant that is easy to care for. Certain tropical plants require specific environments to thrive, while others do not require much attention and can live for a long time. Examples of easy-to-care-for plants include pothos, snake plants, peace lilies, and dracaenas. Most cacti and succulents also offer stunning shapes and varied foliage and are easy to grow. Spider plants, tradescantia, and zz plants are other good plants that do not require much care. The evergreen aglaonema, which is commonly seen in displays, is another easy plant that requires low light but dislikes cold and rainy weather. It sheds its lower leaves over time but can easily rot if overwatered. Warnings. Some plants contain chemicals in their leaves that can be toxic to small household pets. Some of these plants include peace lilies, diefenbachia, and caladiums. Make sure to research your prospective houseplant online and see if there is any cause for concern if you have children or pets.